Hi, and welcome to Coding TensorFlow, where you'll learn all about coding machine learning and AI apps using TensorFlow. I'm Lawrence Moroni, a developer advocate for TensorFlow, and today I'll be looking at TensorFlow Lite and getting it to run models on Android. TensorFlow Lite is TensorFlow's lightweight solution for mobile and embedded devices. It lets you run machine learned models on mobile devices with low latency quickly so you can take advantage of them to do classification, regression, or anything else you might want to do without necessarily incurring a round trip to a server. It's presently supported on Android and iOS via a C++ API, as well as a Java wrapper for Android devices. On devices that support it, the interpreter can also use the Android Neural Networks API for hardware acceleration, otherwise it will default to using the CPU. Here you can see me running the app on my Android device and using it to classify a number of objects. It's quite fun to play with. And note how the interpretation of a mouse changes as I move the camera around. Or the first mug has a high handle, which kind of makes it look like a picture, so that shows up as a possibility. Finally, my Google mug is broad and looks a bit like a mixing bowl, and the app detects that. So how does all of this work? Well, let's first talk about the model. The app is built using a mobile net model. Mobile nets are small, low latency, low power models that are designed to meet a number of use cases, such as object detection, face attributes, fine grained classification, and landmark recognition. What's nice about them is that there are a number of different ones that are pre-trained, including the model at this link, which works for image classification that is compatible with TensorFlow Lite. Download that file, and you'll unzip it to see two files, a .tflite file describing the model and a labels file describing the labels that the model is trained for. As you can see, because your model is already in the tflite format, it's ready to be run on TensorFlow Lite. So let's take a look at the APIs for that. In fact, I would recommend that you stick with pre-built models for the time being. As TensorFlow Lite is a developer preview, it doesn't support all the operations of TensorFlow yet. And you might encounter some issues with unsupported ones when you're converting your model to the TF Lite format. OK, let's get down to looking at it on a mobile now. First of all, to use TensorFlow Lite in your Android app, you need to include the TensorFlow Lite libraries. You do this by editing your build.gradle file to include them. Once you've done that and synced, you'll be able to import a TensorFlow interpreter. An interpreter loads a model and allows you to run it by providing it with a set of inputs. TensorFlow Lite will then execute the model and write the outputs. It's really as simple as that. Of course, you have to load the model, and the API makes that very straightforward. Now, a good place to store your model is in your app assets. The code will then read the model directly from there. It doesn't have to be there, of course. You can load a model from just about anywhere, but make sure you get your paths right. Once you've done that, you can instantiate an interpreter. And in this case, I called it TensorFlow Lite and loaded the model into it. Let's look at the app again. Now, what's going on here is that it's reading frames from the camera and turning those into images. It then uses those images as an input to the model, which in turn outputs values. These values are an index to the appropriate label and the value for that label, the probability that the image matches that label. We'll pick the top three, and we'll write them to the user interface. Let's take a look at the code. First, you can see, is the input. We're getting the image data, which is received from the camera as a bitmap. We convert that bitmap into a byte buffer, which the model can read. This buffer is called IMG data. Remember that. We'll come back to it in a moment. When you downloaded the model, you also had a TF Lite file and a text file containing labels. These labels are a list of all of the objects that the model can recognize. Here's the first few. So for example, label 0 is background, label 2 is goldfish, and so on. Remember the image data from a moment ago? Well, we'll load that into our TensorFlow Lite interpreter, and we'll get an output called label prob array. It's probably easiest if we look at that in the debugger. So here you can see I hit a breakpoint on looking at a picture of my mug. As you can see, the top elements on the list, the goldfish, et cetera, have very, very low probability. Indeed, it's like 1.79 times 10 to the minus 5. But when you scroll through the output list, you'll see, for example, that label 505 has a relatively high priority. 
And number 505 corresponds to coffee cup, which, as you'll remember from the video, that's what I was looking at. If you want to try an app for yourself that does all of this, you can get it on GitHub at this link. And that's a starter in TensorFlow Lite for Android. This exciting technology will let you load all your models onto an Android device, taking advantage of onboard hardware, and allow you to execute them. I showed an example using image recognition in a video stream, but of course you're not limited to that. At the moment, TensorFlow Lite is in developer preview, so you may encounter some restrictions in operations that are supported, but we're updating it all the time. Finally, if you want to learn more, including how to retrain the model I showed in this video to tailor it for specific scenarios, check out the TensorFlow for Poet Code Labs on the Google Developer site. I can't wait to see what you build on mobile with TensorFlow Lite. And don't forget to hit that Subscribe button for more great coding with TensorFlow videos. Cheers. Don't forget to click the Subscribe button for more great videos like these ones.